People have asked me why I bother teaching. Why don't I just uh, do my woodworking? And the, the answer is camaraderie. I love teaching. When you teach, you also learn. And I've learned so many things because I'm bringing in many intelligent people. And uh, they'll ask a question sometimes and it just stops me. And I thought, I never thought of that. Or they, uh, they help me change my process and make it better by just an observation they've made that, I, you know, 20 years later. And when I was uh, learning from Sergey, I suggested a way of doing something. And he said, I've been making these things for 40 years that way. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so it happens to everybody, even a master. So um, camaraderie. Uh, and, and the feeling you get when you impart knowledge on somebody else and you see them glow, see them really happy and they're happy with their project and they show their friends and, and then I get feedback and I see something on the internet that, oh yeah, uh, this happened to my friend and he learned from Ted and uh, it was a great experience. Success in guitar making is a guitar that suits the order as it feels good, it looks good and most importantly, it sounds good. And success uh, for me personally is just those three things. Uh, success as a teacher is seeing those same things for my clients, seeing them walk away with a guitar that I say, you walk away with a $3,500 guitar coming out of the school. And I believe that they're that good. And I won't let a, um, a crappy guitar go out. I'll help that person. And even if you think you're all thumbs, uh, that's part of my challenge and I enjoy that, working with the person that's struggling a bit and making it happen for them so they have success. Today uh, I have with me some Hormigo. I have two, two plates. I'm going to hold them up. Every time you make a guitar, the back is always book matched. So these grew in the tree like this. And we call it book match because they swing out and they make this panel. So that's our back. So I'll just hold one of them. It's easier to hang on to. Uh, you get a nice striped pattern. That's what we call quarter sawn wood, which is the best wood uh, for making guitar parts. The nice thing about this is it's, it's from South America. It's called Hormigo. Did I mention that? Uh, it's very hard. So one of the first things I do when I go to build a guitar is I hold it and I tap. Now, I don't think you'll likely hear that uh, where you're standing, but it's, uh, it's hard and it rings. This is the same wood they use in marimbas to make the, uh, the keys that, that are struck. So when this gets into a vibrating mode, it stays vibrating and it gives you a really warm ringing tone. So, and it's a beautiful wood, it's reddish brown. And when you put finish on this, it's, it was what we call it really pops. In other words, it really comes out and you're going to see all the ripples in it and all these little speckles. So not only does it look great, it sounds great. So to me, this is one of the best woods for making guitars. So this is the school and your workshop. Yeah, this is my bench up here at the front and around the outsides. We've got five benches. And one thing I said when I, I built the school is I wanted to have a window over every bench. Oh, great. Natural light is imperative for a good guitar building. I see. Yeah. Like any art. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Look at the tools, Mike. Oh, what? Oh, this is all for. That's all clamps. Clamps. You, you right. can never have enough clamps. If you talk to anybody who builds anything in wood, you can never have enough clamps. So we've got clamps here, and okay. at each bench, you're going to see a bunch of hand tools. So we supply all the hand tools, uh, so that when the students come in, they just have to show up, and everything is supplied. I see. So, so each person has their own bench with yep. all the tools. Are Planes, there? chisels, oh. gauges. Yep. And they're all specialized. I notice this doesn't look like a normal uh, saw. Right, <laughs> right. They're they're luthier specific. These are standard cabinet makers chisels. Right. But I have some special files. A spoke shave we use on the necks. Little planes like this. Uh, this is a squirrel tail plane. We we use this little fellow for shaping um, the braces inside the guitar. Oh. Yeah. 
So, yeah, there would be a lot of kind of miniature work, wouldn't there, like tool work and everything? Right, so we have some small tools for delicate work, yeah. yeah. And is yeah. this a plane as well? What is this? Yeah, that, oh, this is a spoke shave. This is a cut out of a, out of a guitar. Yeah. This is a spoke shave. It's a, a type of plane where you've got a blade here and two handles, and you draw it towards you when you're shaping a guitar neck. And you can make a whole guitar just like in this one workstation. You can, yep, wow. yeah. Yeah. And then you've got over here about a gazillion more tools. Yeah, well, this goes to my background. Uh, I'm a, also a furniture designer maker. Yeah. So a lot of uh, tools I've collected over the years, and uh, they can be used just as well in guitar making. So uh, this is my rack of tools, and, and including some nice, really nice tools like Japanese chisels, which uh, uh, are really primo. You can get a super edge on them. And you've also got some like big presses or something over here, the bigger stuff, right? Yeah, um, we've got, these are called a troji, but I just call them a horse. Basically, they're, uh, they're a big vice with this, uh, oh, I you see. can yeah, yeah. go like so to tighten it up. And it's got foam in the jaws, so you can see I've got a guitar in there now that's in the middle of being made. And um, it's in a very rough state right now, but uh, this is, what guitars really look like when they're half made. Um, it just holds it nice and firm, but it's uh, got foam jaws so it doesn't hurt the guitar. Yeah, there's one right, right there's here. There's one for each bench, actually. There's, there's one for each bench, yeah. okay. Yeah. But is this what a good, I mean, is that beautiful wood under this black, or is this blue? Yeah, yeah, it's, I'll show you. That's a little bit of natural sapwood on the back. Right. Okay, so it's that yellow color. Uh, and, and the wood is actually black. It's African blackwood. Oh, and it's then, a type of so rosewood. So you're going to be polishing out of sand. Oh and... yeah, yeah. Uh, right now oh, it's in, the... in the dirty stage, and you can see lots of black fingerprints on on the soundboard because the black is getting on your, my hands from the, the the dust from that wood. But all that will be gone, and it'll be just uh, absolutely shining when I'm done. And this is this this beautiful uh, what do you call it, Rosetta? Yeah, that's a rosette with a rosette. Uh, with a decorative stripe, and this guitar. Is going to have an armrest so that when you're playing that guitar, it'll come across as your arm will come across a smooth area up here. Now, is that your or is that your idea? No, it's not my idea. Um, it actually came from uh, Grit Laskin in, in, in Toronto um, a few years back, but it's used all over the world now. Uh, mm. Canadian luthiers have brought a lot of uh, innovation into guitars. Uh, it takes a couple of days to make. But it's uh, it looks nice and it feels good. Yeah, actually, if I can just grab this guitar here. Here's one that's a little further on, and you there can it see. Is. Yeah. There's the armrest and it's polished. Black. What is that? That's the uh, ebony. Ebony. Wow. Ebony. Yeah. This this guitar is almost finished. It's got more finish to go. Beautiful. What's the white? Uh, the white here. Yeah. That's called purfling. That's uh, basically like pinstriping. Uh-huh. Yep. So come on in, Brian. This is the uh, machine room back Jeez, here. Look at all this stuff. Well, it's it's all uh, appropriately sized for guitar making. I, right. I used to, as a cabinet maker, have very big machines. Now I've got I've got a little tabletop planer, but that's just ideal for what we're what we're doing here. You say tabletop? How does that work? planer? Well, basically, it, it's kind of like a ringer washer. You put the wood in here, oh, uh, and it, it has rollers to pull the wood through, and there's a knife that spins in there and it'll shear off uh, the thickness of the wood. So and it's, it's narrow for this narrow wood to go through, right? This right, thing. right, right. And you can adjust it up and down for the various oh, yeah, sizes yeah. of wood. Right here, yeah. yep. And this looks like you're sanding or something? This is Brandy? actually a what, what's called a radiusing disc. Um, it's, it's actually shaped like this because a uh, guitar is actually shaped more like a turtle than it is they call them flat tops, but they always have this dome that makes them stronger. Right. Okay, so when I'm shaping my braces, I'll put a, a straight brace on there, work it back and forth, and it'll end up banana shaped on the bottom. And then when we glue it to the top, for instance, the top will end up being domed. Oh. Yeah. Huh. So that's a, a um, radiusing disc. And then what are these? These look like. Huge machines. Yeah, well, we got a rudder here. Uh, okay. When you put in grooves into your um, into your guitar, like you need a groove to put the uh, truss rod in, 
that will be cut here at this station. That's a, a router station. Okay. So it's a spinning bit that you can move up and down. And you can change various bit sizes to get different size slots. Oh, right. Now this looks like beautiful. Is this wood that you will cut down into strips or something? Absolutely. That's a, a great big piece of African babinga. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Beautiful, very dense, very heavy. It, um, yeah, it's, it's very dusty too. But, yeah. uh, one of the guitars in the showroom is made with African babinga. Yeah. So I'll take this, if I can just scoot in here past you, and I'll cut a board about this wide off of it. Then I'll take that board and put it on the bandsaw on edge, and I'll peel off about four boards from it. That's called resawing. And that's the uh, boards that we would use for the back of the guitar. And I would use this part, the sapwood, you see it's a different color, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the center in the of the center. back of the guitar as a visual accent. Because you, yeah, I've seen some of those guitars of yours that have that in the center of the yeah. back, right? And then yeah. to keep all the color the same, we pull another board out of here about uh, five inches wide. I resaw it and turn that into sides for the same guitar. Mm -hmm. And we steam bend them and get them into that shape. It comes from this big, big thick plank. Like, so, yeah, and, so and, and hard. That's, that's about 50 pounds, that, yeah. that one board. Wow. Yeah, very dense. And what about this big thing? This is actually fairly key to our, our business. It's, a, um, it's like a ringer washer again, because it's got this rubber transport that brings the wood in. And then there's a, um, it's easier if I just show you. There's a drum in here with sandpaper on it. Okay, now you can put sandpaper on both drums. I usually just use one. Uh, and the sandpaper uh, sands thin wood to thickness. You see, when you've got something that's uh, an $800 back going through here, you don't want to put that through a planer because it could catch mm -hmm. on the grain and explode. Mm -hmm. And there's really? $800 it's gone. Oh yeah, it literally explode. Wow. So if you run it through a sanding machine, it slowly sands the top off the wood until we get it down into that two to three millimeter type of thickness. And how do you know about the thickness? Like, uh, I, measure, I measure it using a uh, Bernier caliper. So you just keep pushing it through until yeah. it gets well, done. Well, this that. adjusts how, 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 how much uh, it actually you're adjusts. moving. Okay. This this uh, this uh, adjuster, and this is just to draw all the Suck dust away. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we thickness using a, a sanding drum to bring it down to the guitar the right thickness so it will vibrate and sound good. Wow. Yeah. And this is to to suck the dust out. Yeah. Of that's just a dust collection. Like it's important that I keep all the noise and the dust back here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, separate from the bench room. <laughs> These are all your different. Uh, uh, molds. Molds. The designs of the actual guitar, right? Yeah, so they if you look at each one of them, they look like half a guitar. Yeah. So uh, if you have a guitar with a cutaway, and I'll just point to one here like the Celt. Right. If you've got one like that, that gives you that cutaway you need when you're playing the guitar and you want to get to the upper frets. So if you have a cutaway, you've got one that looks like that, and then the matching one might be the other one here, which is just a standard guitar shape. Yeah. So we steam bend using these molds on our bending machine. Uh -huh. The bending machine. Bending machine is actually out in the other room right yeah. now. But what it is is you, you've got a sheet of steel, and then you've got a thermal blanket. Then you put your side piece in. So your side piece might be 34 inches long, five inches wide, and about an eighth of an inch thick. And the thermal blanket it's a heats it up, and so it's thermal starts to blanket. bend. Heats, well, we, we get the wood wet as well, wet, so yeah. we get steam. Yes, the thermal blank, blanket, we heat it up to about 270 degrees, and then we apply force and, and force it down over that mold. So it, over it. Yeah, yeah it, it shapes to the same. Well, maybe we'll look at that in a minute. Yeah, yeah we'll show, take, I'll show you outside. That. It's a little easier to yeah, see. And this is actually, okay, so these are cutting. Yeah, well, okay, so you've got a couple of machines here. You've got a jointer here. This has uh, got a cutter here. And you've got two very flat tables. When you get a, a rough piece of wood and you want to get that first flat face, this is the tool that goes across. Okay, so a jointer makes the wood flat. Oh, okay. This is the bandsaw. We do all of our curve cutting on the bandsaw. And the resawing I referred to earlier, if you, you'll need a brand new blade and take your time, you can resaw even wood as hard as bobinga. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But 
You, or you move this depending yeah, on the you design. Move you move fence. this out so if you I, can go around like this. Want. Like if I was yeah. resawing with this, I would have the guides up here and I would have the fence right in about about there at about uh, a small quarter, maybe 330 or 316 of an inch. And you would saw it and you'll get a little bit of waving in there, but then we'll run it through the uh, sanding machine to get it to a very accurate thickness. So in other words, say a side of the guitar, you would sit up like this and push it through yep. to get that width. Yep. Right, and then put it through there. Yep. So over here, this is what? This is an oscillating sanding machine. I'll just turn on for a moment, you'll see. So it's a drum that spins and goes up and down. So if I'm shaping a neck, I can bring it in against that ab abrasive material and slowly shape parts. Um, pretty straightforward and handy as heck. Yeah, what's it ever? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and this is, it looks like a drill. It's a horizontal boring machine. Nice. So it's a drill that uh, goes this way. I got this from California. And we used these when I was in California at school. Um, just very handy. You know the dots on the side of the guitar on the yeah. fretboard? Yeah. That's what we drill with this. We put the fretboard in and we actually push the material and then you fill into them the drill. With something. Yeah. Then we fill them with uh, mother of pearl, usually marking little pieces of shell for markers. Beautiful. Yep. Why don't we look at that? You were talling about sure, the, the bending machine? Yeah, sure. That'll be good. That's out here. Uh, so this is our bending machine, Brian. Uh, I'm just going to plug it in here so we get That's where you're talking about that thermal belt or whatever it was called. The lights come on. Yeah, so basically what you've got, I'll just slide slide over here in front of you. There's a uh, sheet of steel. Okay, that helps form the shape. Right. This is a, a, a heating blanket, a thermal blanket. Then you put the actual wood. Now, uh, I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes. The, wood's wet, right? the wood is wet. The wood is spritzed with water, so it's oh, just dampened. Oh, yeah. And then we wrap it in tin foil so you don't get any staining coming off of the steel. Mm. Okay, and then we put it together in a package like this. Then that goes up onto the bender, like so. And we have to get it in the right position, which is there, for the, so the waste will be in the right place. I bring it down so it just starts to bend and I have to stop there because it's not heated up yet so I would be heating this up. There we go. Uh, and, and this will move back and forth depending on your design. Right. Well, but whole, you right? see there's enough length here to bend the upper boat and this is the lower boat. So just for demonstration purposes I'll just show you these rollers go on. Which is why you have these slits in the yes. mold. Yeah. Okay, so we have to adjust this because I've got some more thickness. I've got to loosen this off so I can get the uh, the guide rod through. So that guide rod goes through. And I've got to get that on. There we go. So now we're connected. Snug that down a wee bit, and if we were actually bending right now, I would roll this forward, oh. and as you can see, the guide rod will follow down and bend the wood down. <laughs> yeah, so that's called a, a thermal bender. Wow. Okay, let's head over, and I'm going to show you uh, <coughs> a couple other things in the shop. Okay. I'm going to grab a guitar because I'm going to show you the buffer in a moment. I've got a table saw in the middle. Just a tiny one, nice and quiet, so you can make small cuts like on, on guitar braces. Okay. This is a buffing machine. You've got two wheels. When we fire it up, I'll charge it with abrasive that comes in uh, like a big soap bar. And there's oh. abrasive in that material. So you fire it up. Put some abrasive on. Polish your guitar. So you can polish sideways and then polish with the length. And you can't go all the way. 
way down. Just flip it over. And away we go. There we go. Whoa. <laughs> and that kind of completes our, our machinery tour. Beautiful. I have to say, I thought you were there all night long with the uh, sandpaper or something. Well, I was before. <laughs> this is the really? last part. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's sanded at many different levels. Oh, 600, 1500, yeah. 2000, then the buffing machine. Yeah. Yeah. And the French polish that you've talked about, is that you use this as well? Yeah, absolutely. This is a French polish This guitar. is the one. Yeah, beautiful. Um, okay. You have to build up enough material. Uh, so that you've got a, a decent amount of thickness so that you can sand it back without sanding through. Right. So you sand it until it's very smooth and then you do final polishing on the buffing. And this wheel. must be that African wood that you're talking about with the center, is it? Well, a, a number of woods have that. This is a South, uh, South American wood South American. called okay. Granadillo. Oh, but right. yeah, that's sap wood and we use that for a... Uh, the decoration. Yeah, the it's decorative. Beautiful. It's just beautiful stuff. Yep. So that's our little blackwood guitar. Very popular model. Beautiful, yeah. And you've got all the, it's all laminated different woods through here. Yeah, five, five, five pieces uh, make up the headstock, which makes it nice and strong, and five pieces in the neck. So it has this nice tulip shape here, and then we always put a little bit of, uh, of uh, ebony on the back, which makes it uh, just a little classier. And your students come away with a guitar like this when they finish they do. the class. They do. The, wow, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. And you, being the maestro, make sure they go away with a good one, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I keep them on track and, and I guide them through the process. I only take up to five people, right? There's five benches. Uh, you can do ten benches and make more money, but how much time? They get one-tenth of your time. The worst case they can get is 20%. And quite often we'll have uh, three or four people, so then they're really getting a lot of teacher time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, as someone who's starting out again, yeah, uh, well, a few months in, this is really overwhelming. Like to try to decide what guitar would I, how would I even? Could you help me? How do you decide what guitar is best for you? You know? Yeah, it's different for everybody. Yeah, um, we can get you into a small guitar, like this one here. This is a, a our our little black one. That's our smallest guitar. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can get you into a mid-sized guitar, like a grand concert, this size. Uh, I'll go past this one. This is a super jumbo, and that's a, a bit of an outlier. Um, but this one here, for instance, that's a, a full um, dreadnought. Okay. Uh, this is a slope shoulder dread. So basically what I'm saying is there's three sizes. You've got your small, your medium, and your large, if you simplify it. Okay. Now, you're a pretty big guy. You can get your arms around any of them. So if you want to buy a larger guitar, you're going to get more volume coming in your guitar because it pumps more air. Right. Okay. Because okay? you get volume from two places. It pumps it off, directly radiates off the spruce top, and a certain amount gets pushed out like, like an air pump huh. out of the uh, sound hole. So you, like if you were a petite lady, you'd have less options. A petite, petite lady wouldn't be able to get her arms around this. So it's just, it's just too large. You end up with this scenario, right? So, it gets down to. Um, but there's things like this shape is different than the other shapes. Right, right. Let me just stand over here for a moment. Yeah. I'll just pick this one off. This is a full-size guitar with what we call a cutaway. Right. Okay, and a cutaway is when you're playing your guitar and you're a good player. You can move up and get to the frets up here because this is not impeding oh. your hand access. Okay, so a cutaway is a handy thing. Uh, this is a standard 14 fret guitar, which means from the nut to the 14th fret, that's where it's mounted to the guitar body. If you look at this one over here, it looks very similar, but if you counted the frets from the nut. To where it's mounted at the top of the guitar body, that's 12 frets. And how does that affect my playing then? So what, what does that mean? Well, yeah. we've taken the, 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 um, the fretboard and we've moved it deeper into the guitar. So a number of things happen. The sound hole gets moved down. The bridge gets moved down, which is a good thing because if you think of this as a trampoline, 
you want to be in the center of the trampoline to get more volume. Okay. Um, you can see on this one, you're higher up. This one, it's down lower. If you look at the gap underneath the bridge. So we're lower on this one. It's going to be in the middle of that soundboard. So you're going to get more projection. The 12 fret. Yeah, you're going to get more. More projection. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be um, hmm. louder for the same amount of energy input. Now, is the size of the hole always the same, or is it the main Yeah, um, you can vary that. Uh, what you don't want to do is choke off a guitar. I do all mine standard at four inches, which is a good big sound hole. Okay. Yeah. You also have another sound hole there on that one. Yeah, well, this is a, a different feature. What this one does is this is called a sound port, and this allows the, um, the player to hear more. So if I'm playing and I'm doing a, a, a gig in a bar yeah. and I'm plugged in, I'm playing away, well, a certain amount of sound comes up here, so it helps me monitor and hear better what I'm playing. Oh, okay. That's really interesting. Yeah. So th this, this guitar is a, a shape and a size that suits me. Um, you try it for yourself. Now, once you get a strap, yeah, then you don't have to you hold call, it while you're what playing. What do you call this then? This is a, this is a dreadnought with cutaway and dread, sound port. Dreadnought with cutaway. And, yeah, it's and sort and of a standard port. configuration where it's a 14 fret to the uh, 14 fret to the body. Now, is there a difference in the size of these necks or shape or anything? No, I make them all the same. Right. Uh, they all have to be comfortable for you. So I've come up with a yeah. formula essentially for a blackwood neck, which is a certain thickness here, a certain known thickness here, and I, I have a sectional, um, uh, a set of sectional measurement gauges that we use to make sure that they, that they all come out carved, although they're hand carved, they all come out very close to the same, probably within half a millimeter from guitar to guitar. So, but are there other guitars that have thicker or other thinner? Absolutely. Uh, this one over here, I made a few years ago, yeah. and, and many different guitar companies have different uh, sizes. Typical is uh, Fender electric guitars. They have this one nice little thin guitar neck that I like a lot. And then they've got this one called their C-neck, which is C-shape. It feels like a club to me. And I couldn't buy that guitar. But I would certainly buy one of their other ones that has a, a, a finer, a little more refined neck. Now, um, is it easier to play a, a one with a wider neck than the thinner, or thinner that's better? Or, or oh, what? that's really... What's the preference? That, preference is the word. It's yeah, individual, it's individual preference. Individual. Um, some people will say a wider neck is a little easier if yeah. they have big fingers, uh -huh. right? Um, I get this all the time, a standard nut, and I make all mine one and three quarter inches across the width of the nut, okay? Uh, somebody with a real big hand might say, can you make me one a sixteenth over or a sixteenth under? So you're either spreading your strings a little bit or, or compressing them closer together. Um, my personal opinion, I just make them one and three quarters and I don't vary from that unless someone specifically says, I must have this. So these are, this is thinner than this one. This is the only one that you've made. Uh, this one is thicker in its section, but it's the same. Oh, they're all the same width. The same. Yeah, the same profile here. So nice. that's a one and three quarter neck. That's a one and three quarter neck. But this one uh, was made before I redefined my neck shape oh, to I this see. new neck. I see. Uh, about four years ago. So, so all of them with the exception width. of that one. These are that's correct. Width. You're just talking about the yep. I see. Yep. So it, it depends on, on your application. If you're at home and, and you want a nice size guitar that's comfortable to play, puts out enough bottom end, I go for this size guitar that's a mid-size and that's the most common one right. that's purchased at Grand Concert. Um, a lot of guys, guys with big frame like yourself will say, well, I got the... Yeah, arms long arms. Yeah, I can handle this, so I'll, I'll take the dreadnought. And the, you naturally get a little bit more bass and you get more uh, volume coming out of the. Uh, you get guitar. more bass and more volume. Yep. And for, in your opinion, is there one that has a more beautiful or resonant or whatever sound over the other, or the size? Make any difference there? You can actually make a small guitar like the little Blackwood yeah. sound really great. Uh, it'll be slightly lacking in bass as compared to a big volume guitar. So it's mostly. But I'm got... talking about physical volume uh -huh. in this case. 
Um, so this has bigger physical volume and big, bigger sound volume. Would it affect the bigger one have not as much treble or? or no, not at all. The treble is the same in all same of them. Same in all of them. Uh, it, it's only it's noticed just the in the bass. Oh, that's interesting. Huh? Yeah. Okay, I've been hearing Luthiers talking about flat tops, and this, to me, all guitars seem to have a flat top. So, yeah. what is that? <laughs> well, all the guitars you're looking at here could be called a flat top. A flat top is kind of a nickname. And in fact, all of these guitars are turtle shaped, they're domed on the top and domed on the bottom. The reason for the dome is uh, it makes it much stronger. Just like you know how you can grab an egg by the ends and you can't crush it, but if you grab it by the sides, you can. But you're talking about this rather than I'm that. No, I'm talking about this is bowed. So they, it is bowed. Yeah, and so is the back. Oh. And the reason for that is strength. But you got to watch what you're doing on the top. So when we talk about flat top, you can actually make a guitar flat on the top, and that can give you a little more in terms of bass end. If you think of it, if you add more curvature and you want this big wave to move, it can't if you've got too much curvature, if you accentuate that. Okay, so I put a very small amount of curvature. I use a 50 foot radius on my tops. If you get down to 30 or less, you're starting to cut off the bottom end uh, response of your guitar because it, it can't fluctuate. It wants to be able to do this. Okay, so. Um, Flat top is really just a nickname, and uh, what you want is a guitar that doesn't have a real tight radius on, on, the, uh, on the top. But realistically, listen to the guitar. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You, know, you can talk tech specs and, and innuendo uh, until you're blue in the face. Play the guitar, play it in a couple of different situations. Play it in the small room, play it in a big room, plug it in. How does it sound? How does, it, does this pick up natural? Like I, I, I like LR bags pickups like uh, this one. Right. This is it. And this is the controller. But what you don't see is there's a, a piezoelectric pickup underneath the uh, saddle, and there's a microphone inside. You can balance between the two, adjust your volume. There's a battery check button and a phase inverter in case you have feedback when you're playing in a bar. <coughs> Pardon me. So, um, yeah. So what, you, so what you're saying is try the guitar out for the size and then try it out for sound, the different ones for Absolutely. sound. Absolutely. Yeah, and a good shop will let you take one home that you pay for it, take it home, and if you don't like it, you bring it back the next day okay. and pick another one. You know, okay. uh, I, I give 24 hours, and if I ship one out, you get a week. You get a week to try it and get it back to me in perfect shape. Um, I haven't had one come back yet. Now, didn't you say that you have a, a lifetime guarantee? Absolutely. Uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, about a year ago said to me, what are you doing with this three-year guarantee? Are you not confident? And I, I said, well... I said, that's a good question. I am confident. And uh, he said, well then, do a lifetime guarantee. Stand behind your equipment. And now I do. Lifetime guarantee on everyone that goes out of the shop. Sounds good to me. Well, thank you. I think that's, thank you. Thank How you. It, man? Okay, <laughs> okay. So which one are you gonna take home? I'll take four. Okay. <laughs>